Our next speaker joins us from the College of Nursing and is going to discuss with us the problem of workflow and how we can improve upon that. Please help me welcome to the BrewDeck stage, Dr. Michelle Finessi. Thank you. If nursing had its own Facebook page, what would our relation status be? I thought long and hard about this as I was putting together this, this talk today. And at first I thought it should be something like, we've come a long way, baby. But then I realized that's not entirely accurate. And a better description would be, it's complicated. And let me tell you why. Nursing represents the largest group of healthcare professionals in the United States. And at virtually every aspect of care that we deliver, we are coming in contact, intersecting quite literally, with technology. So whether you're a critical care nurse working at the bedside, caring for a very sick patient, you could be a nurse trying to enter data into your electronic medical record or look up information, that's technology. Or you may be in a critical care unit managing some equipment that was not there 15 years ago. And in this particular case, I have an image of a dialysis device. But what has not changed is the fact that patients are still at the very core of what we do, the care that we deliver for patients. And the problem I'm going to talk about here today is this intersection, this pain point where nursing care meets technology. So let's just take a step back and think about what it is nurses do. And in the nursing world, we call this workflow. And I defined it quite simply as the actual steps needed to conduct patient care safely. And when we think about workflow, we think about these really complex algorithms of what it takes to carry out a particular intervention. And some steps, it could be 10, it can be 20, upwards of 30. And we repeat these over and over again for patient safety. Now, what I'm going to do today is unpack two very common nursing interventions but I'll do this in a story-based format, so you won't see these complex algorithms. But before I do that, I thought it would be best for me to share my lens and where I come from. I graduated from an associate's degree program in 1997, and when I first started out in the nursing field, we quite honestly used paper to document. And we used these flow sheets, and there were eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper five of them strewn together at the same time. And the day shift would chart on their side, they would pass that piece of paper to the night shift and we would chart on our portion. And at the very end of a 24 hour period, you might see coffee stains on this, you might see other bodily fluids on this piece of paper. But what was interesting is you could pinpoint at exact, an exact time and go and look at what happened at 10 o'clock in the morning and how much fluid was given. Now fast forward till today, we now have electronic medical records. And it's a good thing. We now have electronic data capture. And the goal is to optimize patient safety and improve patient outcomes. And I've seen that happen. Now at best, these systems save lives. At worst, it can cause patient harm because we're searching for information or we may not have the information readily available to us. And what's sandwiched in between is the nursing profession. And that intersection is what I'm gonna to continue to talk about in the next couple of slides. I wanna to preface to say that at no point am I saying technology is bad, but it's that, that intersection, that pain point that I, I want us to focus on for today. So let's talk about medication workflow. And here I'm gonna talk about aspirin. It's a common medication that we administer in the hospitals. Some of you in this audience and some of you listening may even be on aspirin. It's something that we give to patients with cardiovascular disease. Now, in the hospital, when we go to administer that medication, we have what's called the five R's, or the five rights. Nurses know this, we still teach it today, and this is how I learned it. It's gotta be the right patient, the right dose, the right time, the right route, the right medication. And now what we have, in addition to the five rights, or the five R's, are these scanning devices. And quite honestly, it's just a, a band, a wristband that a patient is going to wear. And we scan this, this band, uh, every time we go to give the medication. And we also scan that medication. So it's going to make sure it's the right dose, the right time, the right patient, the right route, and so forth. If it's 10 o'clock in the morning and you are trying to give a medication that's due at 12 noon, it's gonna go and you cannot give that medication. You can't sign it off. 
Now that's a good thing. There's some safety involved there. Um, the sort of the negative aspect of this and something that I caution is that as nurses we tend to sort of rely on the machines to do that work in terms of looking at those five rights and the patient safety aspect of all of this. Now, the other part is that you may have a situation where these bands just, you can't read the band. It's not scannable. The actual barcode has been saturated by body fluids. Uh, and in that case, you've got to go and find another wristband or figure out another way to make this happen because you have to give that medication. Now let's go to the second aspect, and that is pharmacy systems. Ph Pharmacy's been around and as long as I've been nursing, and they are, are a very important part of what we do in hospitals today. And the, their important work here is that they become a secondary check. And there are patient profiles that are involved here, and they have their own unique electronic system that's also communicating with the nursing world. So any sort of allergy or adverse reaction or potential interaction is going to be reviewed by the pharmacist. And if there is such a thing that's identified, there's an automatic stop. We cannot administer that medication and phone calls are going to happen before, it, before we can decide whether or not we're going to give that medication. So again, any sort of hiccup in that system is going to delay administration of medication. And then finally, there's the documentation part of all this. Not only are we documenting that medication, but we're looking at lab values, platelet values, all of these things. You know, and we're actually looking through multiple screens to make that happen. Now, if you're Mr. Smith and you take aspirin every day and it's due at 9 o'clock in the morning and there happens to be a hiccup in the system, if you don't get your medication until 10 o'clock in the morning, I suppose that's okay. But if you're the different Mr. Smith coming in the door with chest pain symptoms and you need a stat dose of aspirin, a hiccup in this system is a delay that's unacceptable. That's a stat need for your medication. So we have to work on these systems, uh, particularly for the um, efficiency aspect of it all. Now let's take a look at intake and output. This is a very simple metric, and what this reflects is how much fluid did the patient take in and how much fluid is going out. That fluid could be blood, it could be urine, it could be saturated dressings. This gets to be actually quite complicated because nowadays we actually have these new devices. This is a dialysis machine that we are going to see in a lot of intensive care units out there, and we'll use this for patients who have some sort of kidney injury and we are optimizing or trying to help pull fluid off from the patient. The problem here, as you'll see on this particular uh, screen, is that there's, a, there's an actual screen for you to look at all the numbers, all the pressures in there. And none of this is coordinated or captured in the electronic medical record. So quite literally what you have are nurses documenting on p extra pieces of paper separate cl clipboards, followed by re-entry of that information into electronic medical record. And sometimes it, it may not happen. You may not have certain numbers entered in the electronic medical record, and this becomes a problem because the electronic medical record is where we're going to look at the patient's fluid balance. And that's going to determine whether or not we're going to increase tube feedings, whether or not we're going to give fluid whether or not we need to give diuretics or whatever the need may be. It determines a therapy. So ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is the ultimate mismatch. And basically, nursing processes are at odds with systems that we have in place. Now, not all is lost. I'm a glass half full kind of girl. And I think there are some things we can do. And I have some ideas. And the first one is interoperability. And, in the academic world and in academic medical centers, hospitals across the country, we love to talk about this because it's a real problem. And what I mean by this is getting data from point A to point B. And what I think is missing here is that human aspect in that algorithm. It's not just moving that data point, but how we're capturing that and how we're getting it to that next place where we need to be able to review that information. I would also like to see nursing recognized as a key stakeholder. Uh, and this is for funding agencies, any institution that wants to adopt new technologies, researchers, any group. I think nurses uh, are where, it's where the rubber hits the road. And we have a unique insight into what happens in hospital centers. 
and I'd like to see us sitting at that table. Now, I also happen to teach an informatics class at The Ohio State University in the College of Nursing, and I think it's a great class. You should consider taking it. Um, but what I'd like to see is moving beyond the basics. And, and there are very basic things we need to teach here, but I would like to see nurses uh, learn more about how, where that data is held. How do we get involved in systems-based training? What do we need to do to implement some important changes? That is desperately needed. And of course we need the basics, but let's also introduce these other topics. And then fa finally, I want to talk about patient-family-centered care. I mean, it's not the last thing, but it's, it's what we do as nurses. We take care of the patients, and ultimately, we're in touch with the families quite a bit. I, and I think with any technology that we adopt, we really need to take a step back and consider the impact this has on our patients and our families. So in closing, uh, getting back to my Facebook analogy, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to recruit all of nursing's friends. That includes pharmacy, our physician colleagues, uh, administrators, funding agencies, anyone out there that wants to have a meaningful discussion, and let's make this a safer place for our patients and a safer place for nurses to practice. Thank you very much.